Hello and welcome you are watching News at 6 on Rajya Sabha TV with me Ashwarya Kapoor let us begin with the headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls on judiciary to be powerful and perfect questions role of tribunals in dispensing justice Chief Justice Ajay Datu responds on Good Friday controversy says matter should have been resolved within the family India evacuates 441 people from Port of Aden they include 176 foreign nationals including from Bangladesh Djibouti Nepal Pakistan and Uganda All set for formal merger of Janta Parivar in Delhi parties to declare formal name and symbol And Kenya starts 3 day national mourning for college massacre victims President Kenyatta pledges revenge against Al Shabaab Well, the top story Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the inaugural session of a conference of chief ministers and chief justices of high courts in Delhi today he called for an inbuilt mechanism to address deficiencies in the judicial system which he emphasized need to be perfect Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressing chief ministers and chief justices of high courts telling the judiciary to be both powerful and perfect Modi reminded them that the common man's expectations are huge and even the slightest strain to the judiciary would endanger its image hamari judiciary powerful bhi ho hamari judiciary perfect bhi ho hum sashakt bhi ho hum samarth bhi ho aur ye avashyakta isliye hai ki samanya manav ke liye ye ek jagah hai prime minister also emphasized the need to evolve an inbuilt mechanism of self correction to prevent the rot from within itri credibility hai is institution ki aur jab alochana asambhav rehti ho tab in built hamari apni atma parikshan ki vyavasthaen viksit karne ki samay ki mang hai hum us prakar ke in built dynamic mechanism ko develop kare aur jisme सरकार का कोई हस्तक्षेप नहीं होना चाहिए ही ऑल्सो आस द चीफ मिनिस्टर्स टू प्रोवाइड फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड स्क्रैप आउट आउटडेटेड लॉज फॉर स्पीडी जस्टिस 700 कानून खत्म करने के लिए तो कैबिनेट में से अप्रूवल ले लिया लेकिन अभी अभी मेरे सामने नजर में करीब 1700 कानून आए 1700 और मेरा एक सपना था कि मैं पर डे कानून खत्म करूं हो सकता है 5 साल के मेरे टेन्योर में पर डे कानून खत्म करने का मेरा सपना मैं पूरा करूंगा ये कानूनों की जंजाल में हमारी पूरी न्याय तंत्र फंसा पड़ा है मोदी कॉल अपॉन जजेस ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट टू रिव्यू वर्किंग ऑफ ट्राइब्यूनल्स हुज परफॉर्मेंस ही सेड वाज डिसमल ही सेड अ लॉट ऑफ बजेटरी एलोकेशंस वाज स्पेंट ऑन ट्रिब्यूनल्स बट द रेट ऑफ डिस्पोजल्स लेफ्ट अ लॉट टू बी डिजायर्ड ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी And in related news the chief justice Ajay Datu today tried to put the lid on the controversy over justice uh, Kurian Joseph's letter to the prime minister on judges conference he said it was an internal matter of the judiciary and will be settled within the family Chief Justice of India Ajay Datu on Sunday sought to downplay the controversy over holding the judges conference on Good Friday responding to Supreme Court judge Justice Kurian Joseph's objection CJ Datu called the episode unfortunate and avoidable even as he clarified that the presence of not all supreme court judges but only the top 3 was mandatory justice kuran clarified that he only wanted to raise the serious concern about the future of secularism in india a point that did find support from lawyers and politicians it is an advice given to the executive that please respect the religious susceptibilities of others kya ye sarkar या इस तरह का कोई कार्यक्रम कभी होली दिवाली ईद या बैसाखी के दिन पर भी आयोजित किया जा सकता है एक धर्म की आस्थाओं पर इस तरह की चोट जो धर्म निरपेक्ष संविधान है उसकी भी भावना के विरुद्ध है बोथ दी ऑनरेबल चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया एंड जस्टिस कुरियन जोसेफ आर आउटस्टैंडिंग जजेस एंड आई डोंट मीन गुड जजेस आई मीन ट्रूली आउटस्टैंडिंग जजेस therefore i feel sad that a somewhat avoidable controversy has arisen 
Justice Joseph declined to attend the Prime Minister's dinner for top judges on the ground that the judges' conference clashed with Good Friday and Easter weekend. In his letter to the Prime Minister, he requested him to show equal importance and respect to all sacred days. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had invited all Supreme Court judges, the Chief Justices of High Courts and the Chief Ministers of all states to a dinner at his official residence on Saturday. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in the other top story, amid heavy fighting in Yemen, the Indian Navy continues its uh, daredevil rescue operation of stranded Indians. Two Indian Navy ships have defied a heavy bombing in Aden and Al Mukalla port to ferry the rescued people to safety. Now, 11 other Indians were rescued by Pakistani naval ship. Meanwhile, another batch of 193 people reached home from Yemen, recounting their tale of horror. The massive operation to evacuate all Indians from war in Yemen is nearing completion. Despite heavy fighting, Indian Navy ships not only managed to pull out stranded Indians, but also ferried 179 people from 17 different countries to safety. Despite heavy shelling in Aden, INS Mumbai managed to evacuate 441 Indians to Djibouti. INS Sumitra has also started evacuating more people from Al Makalu port in Yemen. 11 more Indians were also rescued by a Pakistani naval ship. So far, close to 2,000 Indians have been evacuated from the strife-torn country. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and her ministry's spokesperson reacted on Twitter, praising the risk taken up by the naval forces to continue the evacuation process. I am proud to be an Indian because our, our Indian Navy, they are very strong, very tight. So they are uh, taking us safely to India. Meanwhile, a batch of 193 Indians landed in Kochi on Sunday, returning from war-torn country. Those rescued hope the remaining families left stranded will be rescued soon. Today, uh, 185 persons have landed here. So we have made all, all arrangements to receive them and we will be sending back to their destination. All the people from uh, Yemen will reach safely. So don't worry, all the families, uh, they are safe. So they are not, uh, you know, targeting to the, uh, they are not targeting to the civilians. Over 2,000 Indians are still estimated to be trapped in Yemen, mostly nurses from the southern states. Sources said Indian Navy ship Tarkash and two other commercial ships are also available for evacuation of Indians. However, there were concerns over evacuation from the capital Sana as militants have stepped up their offensive in the region. Bureau report for Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, as evacuations uh, continue there, air uh, strikes uh, by the, uh, are continuing uh, for the 12th day today in Yemen by the Saudi-led coalition. Now, fighting has also intensified between the Houthis and the forces loyal to President Mansoor Hadi. The United Nations says at least 519 people have been killed in the past two weeks and an additional 1,700 have been wounded. Now, tens of thousands have also fled to the nearby countries of Som Somalia and Djibouti. The United Nations Security Council is considering Russia's call for a pause in the airstrikes. Chaos in Yemen. On Saturday night, residents of Sana'a witnessed the fiercest Saudi strikes since last week's air assault. Military facilities, including two bases within city limits, were targeted. Fierce fighting continues on the ground as well. On Sunday, President Hadi's forces made significant gains as they were able to ward off Houthi rebels into Aden. Complicating matters is Al-Qaeda, not the Houthis or Hadi loyal forces holding sway in the country's east. Uh, Aden as a city is under control of the committees. Uh, the militias and their uh, allied are still in some of part of the, uh, of the city. Uh, uh, the uh, logistic support that we provide in the coalition to the uh, uh, popular committees is uh, substantial, uh, aid them to change uh, situation in the ground. The Red Cross has called for a 24-hour ceasefire to bring in medical supplies. Russia submitted a UNSC draft resolution calling for a halt to the airstrikes. The council members also reiterated their concern over the grave humanitarian situation in, that Yemen has been facing for a while. The Russian delegation circulated a draft resolution to the council members regarding humanitarian pauses in Yemen and expressed concerns over the humanitarian situation in Yemen since a long time. The council members need time to reflect on the Russian proposal. 
Meanwhile, nations including Pakistan and China are stepping up efforts to evacuate citizens from Yemen. Flights from Egypt, Sudan and Djibouti are also scheduled. The Houthis have said their aim is to replace President Hadi's government, which they accuse of being corrupt. They are supported by troops loyal to former President Ali Abdullah Saleh, who was ousted in the Arab Spring protests. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, in News at 6, we'll take a very short break. But coming up ahead, the government hardens its stance on land bill amid protests from opposition. That and much more after a short break. Stay tuned. Unseasonal rain and hail storms. The rabi crop is ravaged. Vegetables are destroyed. Debt is piling up. It's the farmer's worst nightmare. Our small, small farmers are suffering. This whole crop is destroyed. March became the cruelest month. Watch it all in our special program. The season of distress, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Tradition dating back centuries. A cultural heritage that inspires and warms at once. Magic that awes. Rajya Sabha Television brings you. Events that embrace the wonders of India's classical arts. Conversations with the biggest names in the culture and music. Rajya Sabha Television, Democracy at Work. Hello and a very warm welcome to a brand new edition of World Panorama with me, Frank Pereira. Barack Obama has been elected on the basis that I will no longer take America into wars and in fact quite the opposite, I will pull America out of wars. According to the Indian government, fishermen are not at fault. The US intervention in Iraq set the stage for exacerbation of these conflicts and then the intervention in Syria. Watch World Panorama at these times on Rajan. Come back after the break. Now the centre hardened its stand on the proposed land bill today. The government said that it is ready to face any consequence when it is taken up again in the House. However, the opposition parties continue to raise objections to what they call an anti-farmer bill. Now Congress has made overtures to BJP's ally SAD in Punjab to support the opposition movement against the bill. The BJP-led government has decided not to blink on the proposed land bill. The ordinance reissued on land acquisition with nine amendments was given a green signal by President Pranam Mukherjee, giving a shot in the arm for the ruling party. The centre has now made it clear that it will not allow any further amendments to the bill. However, the NDA government remains cautious over its fate in Rajya Sabha, where they are outnumbered by the opposition. Are they against four times compensation to the lands acquired of the farmers under this 13, 13 Act? There is a fourth schedule to 13 Act, which includes 13 Acts, including last government acquisition for highways, railways, power projects, etc. What does the 2013 Act say? Section 105, it says, within one year of coming into force of the Act, these 13 Acts would be amended to bring their compensation and R&R on par with the 2013 Act. We do not have majority in Rajya Sabha, and it is a stumbling block for our way. Sometimes legislative measures and aimed at development have been blocked in parliament, resulting in delay, but our government is determined to go ahead with the agenda of development, 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 development only. However, the opposition continues to plan its strategy against the controversial bill, which has been termed anti-farmer by several parties. 
Congress has reached out to BJP ally Shirmaniya Kali Dal to back its protest against the proposed bill on land acquisition. Other parties also continue to raise objections. The national meet, of course, was discussing this issue, and uh, the overall impression among the members who attended the meeting was that the party is doing something against the interests of the farmers and also for the interest of the industrial lobby. After all the explanation made by the leadership to brainwash the members also, the impression still remains that what the government is doing is anti-farmer. Bhumi Adhigra Sansodhan Bill is baat ka jita jata udharan hai. Jisko leka pure desh mein, pure desh ke kisan log kaafi jata gusse mein hai, ve andolit bhi hai. Iske saati BSP sahit lagbhat sabhi vipaksh ki paatiyan bhi इस भूमि अधिग्रहण संशोधन विधेयक के खुलकर विरोध में है। We want at least the old bill which the BJP had supported in 2013. That should be retained. In fact, that should be improved more to give greater benefits to the farmers whose land is being acquired. So we have moved concrete amendments to it. We will appeal to all the parties in the in the Rajya Sabha to please consider. This point of view and not to ruin Indian agriculture even more. The opposition parties, especially Congress, have planned massive demonstrations across the country. Meanwhile, BJP has planned to undertake a campaign to counter the opposition's allegations that the bill is not in the interest of the farmers. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. In a developing story, the Janta Parivar merger has been almost finalized today after a meeting at SP Chief Mulayam Singh Yadav's residence today. RJD Chief Lalu Prasad unofficially confirmed the merger of the Janta Parivar today. However, he said an official announcement will be done by Mulayam Singh Yadav later. Lalu also confirmed that his party will be a part of the merger. The other parties to join are Samajwadi Party, JDU, INLD, Samajwadi Janta Party and Janta Dal Secular. Now, the efforts at merger had gained momentum ahead of the Bihar Assembly elections later this year. Our Janta Parivar Chhaw Dal ke baad thay, O Bilay, हो चुका है इसकी फॉर्मेलिटी फाइनलिटी मान ली मुलायम सिंह जी घोषणा करेंगे क्योंकि वही अधिकृत है एक झंडा एक निशान अब बीजेपी को भगाने के लिए मांग रहा है हिंदुस्तान बिल्कुल जी सब कुछ तय हो गया है मुलायम सिंह पे सबने आस्था व्यक्त कर दी नेताजी को नेता मान लिया है अब सिर्फ चुनाव आयोग की उपचरता बाकी रहेगी वही हो रहा है तो एक तरीके से आप मान लीजिए जनता दल परिवार बन गया है बस इलेक्शन कमीशन की औपचारिकता पूरी हो जाएंगी अपने आप में डिक्लेयर हो जाएगा और ये इसका नाम भी तय हो गया झंडा भी तय हो गया चिन्ह भी तय हो गया Following outrage over remarks on the use of tobacco, BD Baron and BJP MP Shyam Charan Gupta may be axed from the parliamentary panel. Prime Minister Modi is understood to have insisted that people with the vested interests should be removed from the panel. Gupta has, however, dismissed the reports but has said that he will abide by the instructions. Nearly 100 foreign firms have been told to pay an estimated 5 to 6 billion dollars for untaxed gains made by them in the Indian markets in the past years. This is the biggest ever tax demand on them. The affected investors uh, can rise substantially as assertments are still in progress and notices could be served in many more cases. BSP Supremo Mayavati today hit out at the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav. She said that if UP government is so confident about its performance, then they should go for mid-term polls. She also attacked the NDA government for not doing anything in the last 10 years. A police constable was uh, mowed down by a sand truck on Sunday in the Marina district of Madhya Pradesh. The incident took place when the constable was trying to stop the truck carrying sand from the Chambal River near a village in Mornia. Now a case has been registered in this regard and further investigations are on. A fire broke out at the warehouse of a, of a courier service, a DHL, in Delhi on Sunday morning. The fire engulfed two floors of the building. However, no casualty has been reported so far. 25 fire tenders were rushed to control the place.
And on to international news now. Easter ceremonies were held in Kenya in the memory of the students and security personnel killed in the Garissa University attack. Now flags were flown at a half mast in a show of respect. President Uhuru Kenyatta has vowed to respond to the attack in the severest way possible. Now this came after Al Shabaab warned of a long, gruesome war unless Kenya withdraw troops from Somalia. <laughs> Easter Sunday prayers in Kenya. Dedicated to the 148 victims of Garissa University massacred by Somalia's Al Shabaab, they marked the first of the three days of national mourning. Islamist militants lined up non Muslim students during the massacre on Thursday, executing them in Al Shabaab's bloodiest attack to date. President Uhuru Kenyatta warned that they would face justice for the mindless slaughter. A bit of worry and fear is almost every day because these attacks came as a, as a surprise so you are not prepared for them and this gives a sense of uh, fear and uneasiness. We tell those that believe a caliphate is possible in Kenya that we are one indivisible sovereign and democratic state. That fact will never change. Our forefathers bled and died for this nation and we will do everything to defend our way of life. Meanwhile, buses are transporting more than 600 students and about 50 staff who survived the attacks. Many survivors were reunited with their families at Nairobi's Nyayo National Stadium that was set up as a disaster center. The Al Shabaab came when we were in the hostels. Now, some of us ran away. We waited for the Kenya Defense Forces up to eight. Now they came at eight and they rescued some of us. But some of us, unfortunately, they were no, they were killed by the Al Shabaab. Almost all the 148 killed were students, while 79 others were injured. Four gunmen were killed. Five people have been detained for questioning. People took to the streets to protest the killings and reject the idea that Al Shabaab had succeeded in dividing the country. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. And more international news and updates in Global Buzz now. French investigators on a Saturday ended their search for bodies in the Alps where a German wings co-pilot crashed his aircraft, killing all 150 people on board. The prosecutors feel German co-pilot Andreas Lubitz deliberately flew the Airbus 8320 jet into the mountainside during a flight from Barcelona to Dusseldorf. Iraqi Shia militia who helped to recapture Tikrit from Islamic State are being pulled out of the city amid reports of violence and looting. The militia made up the vast majority of pro-government forces that retook the city over the past week. But residents in Tikrit say the city's liberators are stealing cars and ransacking the government buildings. At least four people were killed by a suspected Boko Haram fighters in village market near northeast Nigeria on Saturday. Scores of gunmen storms K Mala village, 20 kilometers from Borno, and opened fire on a weekly market, killing four traders. Cuban state media on Saturday released images of a rare public appearance by former leader Fidel Castro who met some Venezuelans who were on a solidarity mission. Now it is the first time the ailing Castro appeared in public in over a year. Well, another short break here. Up next, a glimpse of the Easter celebrations from across the world. Stay with us. तरकश में आज हम बात करेंगे केंद्रीय मंत्री चौधरी वीरेंद्र सिंह से ऐसा बिल जिस पर एक आम राय बनी उसको बदलने की जरूरत दो साल के अंदर क्यों पड़ रही है जब देश का संविधान बना उस संविधान की संरचना में पूरा देश की सहमति थी समय के साथ साथ अब उसमें सौ से ज्यादा संशोधन हुए हैं सरकार कॉर्पोरेट का फायदा कराने के लिए संशोधन कराना चाह रहे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने भी सदन में ये कहा है की कि हम किसान की भूमि किसी गैर सरकारी को नहीं देंगे संसद से इस बिल को कैसे आप पास करें अगर राजनीतिक पहलू से कोई देखेगा तो शायद आ, हमारा समर्थन ना करे वरना ये देश हित के लिए है देखिए तरकश सिर्फ राज्यसभा टीवी पर 
first half of the budget session is over and it has turned out to be one of the most fruitful sessions in recent times. Amendment number 233 is adopted. Watch special report on 234th session of Rajya Sabha. Welcome back. You're watching News at 6. Now let's get you all the sporting action in our sports beat. KKR spinner Sunil Narin has been cleared by the BCCI of a suspected bowling action after reviving, uh, reviewing rather his action at a BCCI panel concluded that Narin's name should be removed from the warning list of bowlers with suspected action. Earlier he underwent a biochemical mechanical assessment in Chennai to get his action cleared. Now Narin will now be able to bowl in IPL 8 for the defending champions. World number one Serena Williams thrashed Spain's Carla Suarez Navarro with the, to win her eighth Miami Open title. Serena raced to a 6 2 6 0 victory in 56 minutes to secure her third straight title. She also became the fourth woman in an open era to win the same tournament eight times, joining Martina Navotilova, Chris Evert, and Seth Steffi Graf. Arsenal continued their superb form in EPL by cruising to a 4-1 win over Liverpool. The Gunners are now placed a second in the Premier League table thanks to a first-half blitz that included three goals in eight minutes. Now Hector Bellerin, Masood Ozil and Alexis Sanchez all scored against a hapless Liverpool. Bayern Munich has earned a narrow victory against Borussia Dortmund in Bundesliga. Polish striker Lewandowski's scored the winner on his first visit back to the club he left on a free transfer last summer. Pep Guardiola's side restored their 10-point lead at the top of the Bundesliga, bringing an end to Dortmund's seven-game unbeaten run this season. Well, that's all in this edition of News at 6, but we we'll leave you with these visuals of Easter celebrations. Now, Christians all across the world are celebrating Easter today. Pilgrims are attending Sunday Masses at churches. Now, Christians uh, celebrate the Holy Week and Easter to mark the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching.